Hey there everybody, how you doing? I am Francis and welcome back to Court's Party Book of Shadows. Last episode we entered the deck room and well, we met the fate you would expect to meet in a deck room. Today we're going to go hide inside the cabinet since under the blood soaked table wasn't exactly my brightest idea. So let's go do that, shall we? <laughs> the footsteps were approaching fast. I ran over to the large cabinet on the other side of the room. Please open. Sounds like it's open. The doors opened without difficulty, but they were the sort that automatically closed when left unattended. Oh well, no time for second guessing now. Yeah, we, we don't go hide somewhere, we're gonna die, and on the table, as we know, didn't exactly work because we died anyways. I turned around and jammed myself end first into the closet grabbing the edges of the closing doors with my fingers and pulling them for all my work. Let's hope this goes better. I really don't know because we already know that Sayaka is going to die by the end of this because uh, that's how the story be be began, you know? And now we're, you know, backtracking and showing what led up to those events. Shrinking my body into a crampled closet, I prayed silently for the footsteps to pass by this room. But then... The person making those footsteps was probably the same person who turned on the light in here. So I didn't honestly hold out much hope. Rapidly my thoughts grew darker. Worst case scenarios began flashing through my mind. One after another. I grasped my quivering mouth and violently shaking shoulders in a vain attempt to calm myself down. I quenched my eyes shut and willed myself to spoil any sounds that may otherwise have leaked out. Naho. Naho, please, help me. I peeked through the gap in the door, and my fears were confirmed. I was no longer alone in this room. Oh, oh, oh. <gasps> the thing that was in here with me was horrible. He seemed not quite human, but not really anything else. And whatever he was, I was scared to death of him. Well, you should. He's got a big giant ass hammer. And he's known for crushing people into dust. <laughs> On second thought, maybe he was human. He just had a gross teeth face and an abnormally large body. Not to mention a zombie like this position, he was horrifying. <laughs> he had the limp body of a girl tossed over his shoulder. He walked over to the blood covered table at the center of the room and Vitney threw her down onto it. Oh god, I have to actually watch her die again? Oh boy. Letting out a moan of agony, she came to. My god, she was still alive! Not for much longer, I'm afraid. <laughs> it hurts, it hurts, it hurts! It hurts, it hurts, it hurts! Please don't! Her legs had been severed at the thigh. Like, completely- <gasps> Is this Nana? So we're in the dimension that she got dragged to before she died. Oh god, I think it is. Like, that's her hair color and, like, her legs are gone. Holy hell, we found her. How could anyone do something like this? Well, seeing what happened to uh, Mayu, I'm guessing since the bruises were getting darker, I think her legs just fell off. Oh, there he is. Uh, oh. No! The man strangled the girl and tied both her arms into metal restraints attached to the table. Oh, boy. No, what was he planning on doing to her? Well, he's either going to kill her with his hammer, or he's going to do nothing and just leave and let Sachiko kill him. Kill her, so either way, this ain't going to go well. Although when you think about the restraints aren't really necessary because uh, she's not going to get that far without her legs. <laughs> oh. Oh. He was coming this way. Uh oh. I, I, I think he saw you. No, 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 please no. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> The man passed right by the standing closet, instead turning his attention toward the nearby corner of the room where he began rummaging through a toolbox. 
He was utterly careless about it, tossing aside any tools he didn't need. Hammers and drills were clanging on the ground. With some sliding under the table, so that's how he found us when we were under the table. Each time a tool fell, he bent down and scooped it up. If I had hit under that table, I absolutely would have been found just now. Yep, and you were when we uh, tried that. Before long, he pulled out a large pair of pliers. Returning to the girl's side, he once again stepped up onto the table and straddled her body. Oh god! Is this the whole tongue removal part? Holy shit. What is he going to do with those exactly? I think extract the tongue. Since that's the thing this game seems to like to do to its victims. Ah! Wordlessly, the enormous beast clamped down on a squirming girl's cheek and squeezed with all his might. Ah! Ah! Then, as far as I was able to determine from my vantage point, he forced her mouth open and shoved the pliers inside. Yeah, he's gonna hold her mouth open with the pliers. And then he's gonna go extract the tongue. With a pair of scissors, you know, because that's what they do with this. No! He readjusted his grip on the handle, then skillfully began opening the two metal prongs while simultaneously pushing them down her throat. Oh god. Whoa! Whoa! No, stop! Finally grasping the girl's tongue with his pliers, the man suddenly yanked his arm upward in one single powerful movement, tearing it from her mouth. Yep, this is uh, extracting the tongue. I thought he was uh, going to do it with scissors, but I guess pliers would work too. I heard the sound of her mouth rodging over, and after a moment of squirming, all her movements ceased completely. Oh, she had her tongue ripped out. Yeah. That's when I lost it. Tears were streaming down my face, and I began peeing myself uncontrollably. Urine was pooling around the bottom of the cabinet. Uh, no, stop. I frantically contracted my stomach, forcing myself to stop peeing. If any of it leaked out from here and gave my position away, I'd be a goner for sure. My stomach immediately fought this sudden denial with a painful cramp. Please, please, don't do this now. The man tossed the severed tongue into an aluminum bucket at his feet, then roughly threw the pliers back into the toolbox with an ear-splitting clatter. He grabbed the bucket containing the tongue and slowly disappeared from the room. And, and now we leave, right? At least we survived this time. Somebody had just died out there. I was in shock. What I'd seen had literally scared the piss out of me. Yeah, quite literally. I didn't think that ever actually happened. I had to get out of this room. If I stayed here until he came back and he found my hiding spot, I could easily be the next one to die on that table. Yeah, we gotta get out of here. Slowly and shakily, I opened the cabinet doors and re-emerged. Yep, it, it, it was her, alright. Yep. Oh jeez. The girl was still on a board. She almost looked alive. Albin gravely wounded, but her mannequin-like lack of any motion whatsoever said it all. Yeah, she, she, she dead. I stared at this fresh corpse and just felt so many conflicting emotions welling up inside me. I exited the room, fighting back more screams from the pit of my stomach that seemed insistent on coming out. Okay, well, we know where we are now. We're in the we're in the spaces that Nano was dragged to when this guy uh, murdered her and her legs fell off. No, no, what is this place? If I'm dreaming, somebody wake me up, please. I'm afraid this is no dream. You were spirited away to heavenly host, and that's not one place you ever want to be. But I knew it wasn't a dream. I accepted that this place was real, even though it differed greatly from any reality I'd ever known before. Yeah, you're in the spirited world that you got spirited away to. My brain was quickly rearing its breaking point. A stupefying fog clouded my mind's circuits. Naho, Naho, help me please. Days passed in this weltering isolated bunker. I couldn't even say how many. My cell phone battery ran out after a while, and my watch died too. I was lost completely. 
But I never stopped looking for Naho. Well, maybe the reason that your uh, watch stopped working, like it's not broken, and your phone ran out of battery, well, they seem to do that in this place. That's because you're in a place where time doesn't exist anymore. I haven't eaten anything. I haven't drank anything. And I've slept so many times, I couldn't even begin to estimate how long I've been trapped here. The chocolate my mom gave me was still in my pocket, and I couldn't bring myself to eat it. I felt like it represented an important bond between me and her. Well, it is your good luck charm, I guess. Oh, oh no. This is when it happens, isn't it? He didn't go that far. Oh. Our friendship will last forever. It will never die. Oh. Oh. Now, oh. Oh, yep, there, there he is. Okay. Save me, please. Ah, uh, poor Sayaka. So sorry, but Naho is not coming for you. Eh? Hmm. I wonder if Saisuke likes chocolate. <laughs> Yummy! Yep, she does. <laughs> well, she got a tasty little snack that is not human flesh. Oh, and that's the end of the story! Holy shit, wow! Well, if I knew it was going to be this short, I would have just included this in the last episode. Oh boy. And we unlocked the uh, chapter 5. Shangri La. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I butchered that, but we're going to be doing that uh, next time. And we've unlocked some more stuff in the bonus. Alright, with that being said, that's going to be the end of this episode. Thank you everyone for joining me and coming back to Court's Party Book of Shadows. Well, if I knew this was going to be that short, I would have, uh, I would have done this in the last episode, alright? But, chapter 5, I feel like deserves its own chapter, so, yeah, I'm going to stop here, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for joining me. Have a nice day. Bye, everybody.